Okay. We call the Newport City Council meeting to, report, to, to order for Monday, May 20th, 2019, 6.30 p.m. City Council room. Members of the council are present. Others include James Johnson, our clerk treasurer, and filling in for the city manager this evening is Tom Bernier, our director of public works. The next item is to approve the minutes of May 6, 2019. I'm going to a motion. So moved. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Motion. Made and seconded. Discussion on the minutes? Okay, none of those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Sabbath. Motion carries. The next is comments by members of the public. Um, we have Pam Lads. Events policy. Just for the council, the council's information. Just for everyone's information, this is going to be an agenda item for next meeting. Mm -hmm. It was not put on tonight's agenda because I wanted to give people plenty of time to be able to review the policy and to chat with people. Um, and so that's why it was not on the agenda for this evening. I just wanted to allow plenty of time because in the past we've been. Um, informed that sometimes we move too quick on things. So that's why it's not on tonight's agenda. But the first one is Pam Lash regarding the events policy. We have two minutes. Thank you. Are you timing me? I will time people, okay. yes. I'm not going to be long winded. The events policy, I put that on knowing that it wasn't on the agenda tonight because there are other things that I would like to be considered or to have people consider. Since I've lived in Newport, which is 10 years, now, there have been several different studies, all of which have talked about the importance of having events. Events for the purpose of welcoming people downtown. What I'm seeing is not welcoming, and that's really sad. The events are challenging because first you have people present here, which is pretty brutal. It's, it's not a warm, inviting, fuzzy experience. They are asked about the fees. They are asked about are they only catering to Newport people. That's really unwelcoming. Actually incredibly disappointing. And it does not make people feel as though they want to subject themselves to that. That's really a shame, particularly as we do need to have people come down. The more people we have come down town who will then spend money here, the better. So I would ask that whoever's looking at this council policy includes facts like that, includes looking at fee structure, some of which makes absolutely zero sense. Any of us can park in Gardner Park next to where the uh, information center is. We could park there overnight if we wanted, and yet you told Green Mountain Farm to School that that would cost, technically, $167 for two hours. That makes no sense. That's, to me, sitting here, standing here, looks like moving money from one slot on the budget to another. That looks about as useful as the strategy that they had out on the water where they were double dipping, your words, for the buoys. Remember that? It doesn't seem any different to me. For something that we know is free, because we've already paid for it as Newport residents, that makes no sense. So I just ask that you factor that in. Thank you. Next we have Bruce James. Thanks, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor. I uh, just want to give you a quick uh, chamber update. Um, we Good news is we've got permission from the state to use the green space uh, down here and the uh, first event that we're going to do is uh, St. John the Baptiste Day celebration June 21, 22, 23. Um, we'll have some uh, music, um, some jazz, some music Quebecois. I would ask the uh, city to uh, make some welcoming statements, um, maybe put something out that says uh, welcome Quebecers or whatever you want to, whatever the phrase might be that, that uh, you feel is appropriate. And um, let's try to do that. I think that what we're going to try to do is go with a, a picnic on the waterfront motif. And so um, to get uh, people into town and to, uh, and that of course with St. John the Baptiste Day, it's, gonna, it's a big uh, uh, Quebec holiday. 
The first excursion train is coming July 13th and departing the 14th. And the second excursion train that you know that we said last time we're going to try to get to is going to come September 21st and depart the 22nd. So I think that's great news. Uh, one of the things that we've heard um, throughout uh, sometimes is that the question about whether downtown merchants support downtown events. And so we have this statement that I'll leave, leave off with you. It's 28 uh, downtown businesses on Main Street, which are actually all the businesses on Main Street that are supporting uh, the events. They want more events. They want those events. And uh, this is all uh, done with the fact that we would uh, be uh, increasing the economic viability of downtown and um, hope that uh, that helps out with the decision making process. And lastly, on the events policy, um, I think that it is very important that we, uh, that the city not throw impediments in the way of creating events. None of us are professional event people, meaning we don't create events professionally. We, we're all volunteers and we need as much support from the city as possible and I would love to be able to work with a city that says what can we do to help and so I think if we all work together in that regard that um, we can make it happen and um, I, I would ask you to look at that and with that I don't have anything that's my chamber update thank you very much okay. next we have on Bear Cowboy <coughs> Wow events Vero and I are going to speak together I'm Andrea Carbine, and this is Vero Rancourt, and we are the producers of Wednesdays on the Waterfront. Um, we're here tonight for a couple of reasons. Number one is to dispel any rumors that might have been floating around about Wednesdays on the Waterfront. We're also here to support an event policy that does not dissuade volunteers such as ourselves to bring events to Newport. The events policy that you are considering does dissuade volunteers such as ourselves. We perceive Wednesdays on the Waterfront to be one of the best events that has happened to Newport in some time, in the recent past and in the last couple of years. Continually, we hear this from business people, visitors, and community members alike. The idea to create a space where community members can gather to socialize, break bread, and listen to music, all while enjoying our beautiful lake, is needed and welcomed by our community. The fact that our community sponsors this and supports this financially to keep this a free event is beyond words. This event is for everyone. And yes, Wednesdays on the waterfront is happening. We have not asked the city um, to leave the green space as we were told there were no, in, no interest in doing so. So we have now all our permits all set from the state and we're excited to have another large crowd of concert goers. We have spoken with uh, BGS we understand the policies surrounding the usage of the site and we will abide to those policies. Finally, we do have some concerns and questions regarding the new events policy slated to be voted on the next meeting. While we've been able to navigate the current policy with little issue thus far, we feel that if you truly want events to come to Newport, the more difficult you make the policy, the less events are going to come here. Our main question regarding the proposed policy is that if we go through this state in the future like we're doing this year and we don't request any services from the city of Newport we should not have to fill out any paperwork in regards to the events policy as we're not de as we are dealing with property from the state I'm just wondering if that is a correct statement having an event like WOW brings residents from Newport and surrounding communities as well as visitors to Newport they go to restaurants and shops while they're here and <coughs> some of the bands that we've had in the past we know that out-of-town guests have come, have stayed at hotels and local campsites. We should be embracing our visitors that are coming to Newport. We have had monetary support from surrounding towns, and it is evident that these towns support us and local events that provide such amazing opportunities for our NEK kingdom and community. We are eager for our third summer of Wednesdays on the Waterfront, and we hope that you are too. We hope that we can all be positive, move this city forward, and make this area flourish. Thank you. Penny Thomas. I have the events policy here, and I don't really understand it. I, I don't understand what third party is. 
uh, I don't, on number five, I don't understand what addressing a recognized community need is. How is that determined? And uh, number six, under policy, it says return on investment measured by economic impact. How is that determined? Number seven, event organizers experience qualifications, responsiveness, promote a positive relationship with the city. What does that mean and who determines that? Um, I mean, I, I could go on. I have a lot of questions and I really don't understand the policy. And I would like to suggest that whoever is writing the policy, my understanding is Melissa and city manager and the uh, Parks and Recreation wrote this, I would like to suggest that it be considered that those of us who are involved as volunteers in putting on events be allowed to work with the team that put the events together, put this policy together, which I do not understand, that we be allowed to have comment into this policy. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Did I make my two minutes? <laughs> the next meeting will be a lot more discussion regarding the policy and a lot more time regarding the policy. Well, Mr. Hare, may I say something? Yes. Well, <clears throat> I, I'm worried that that's too late that when the policy is drafted as proposed, that trying to make suggestions at that time could you water submit, under the could, you, well, could you submit that to the manager or anyone here? And you know, concerns and questions could be submitted ahead of time so that they can be considered. You could put that you're willing to meet with them to talk maybe about it things like that, you know, um, but it'd be helpful if you submit them ahead of time. I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Good thinking. I, I will uh, write down my questions and I would like to be involved and I think that there might be some other people who would be interested in, in involved, the, you know, the public and, and uh, those of us who are putting on events. I, I don't want to be by myself doing it. I mean, I think there are some other people who, I'm seeing some heads go. Yes. Who willing to be involved. So I would also recommend that anyone, because I've heard impediment, obstruction, unfriendly, those types of words, um, which are not helpful particularly. So specifically, what is specifically in the policy that is an impediment to you? What is specifically, that's in, in this draft, that is specifically an impediment? What is specifically a barrier? What is specifically, we need, I need, or we, whoever, needs specifics, not generalities. So, what in your experience when you did an application last year, what was the impediment for, for in that policy process, you know, the application process? What was the barrier to the, to the process? So the specifics of what you experienced or what you see, um, what you actually see that is the impediment would be helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is, is there a cop draft copy of the proposed policy? I have one so. here that's all marked up. I, I don't have anything. Is I don't have anything. Is it put online? We can find it online. I think it's it, 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 here, here's mine right now. Oh, I mean, I, that, that's. I am into the website. Yeah. I get everything in paper or whatever. I don't what? tend to go to the website. Okay, you can get it. Yep. I'm assuming Where, it was put on you? there. I have one if you want to take pictures of it. Oh, I can just get it online. That's fine. Thank you, Madam President. I think it's online. Is it on there with all the red marks on it and, and all the change? You know, there's the, the original policy and then there's the one with all the, the the changes. It would be in the agenda with attachments. Yes. If you go on the city website, go yeah, to government, yes. and it should be somewhere there. I have to be because I never go to the website. <laughs> I get the information for you. You know, and I pack it or whatever. I tend not to. There's also a link on my Facebook page. Oh, like okay. My council Facebook page has a link to the revised policy. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Just be sure to send. I would highly recommend taking Melissa's advice and sending the information ahead of time, the questions, concerns, because this, and then come to the next meeting, June. 
3rd. June 3rd. Um, <coughs> with additional questions, maybe, comments, but. Is that too late, though? I mean, would the council consider. <clears throat> we may be having a vote that night because this is a policy that is being updated. We may or may not. I, I put, I usually put possible vote on the agenda. If it's a hard vote, yes. If not, I put possible. And I would probably put that as a possible. If it's something we're definitely going to vote on, I always put the word vote, knowing that it's something we have to vote, whether it's possible, like the last agenda, I think I had possibly vote on, on that policy and some other things. <coughs> We'll move on. The next item, water meter status and plan. Tom, Mr. Ross uh, asked for this to be on the agenda to give us an update about the water meter program and how it's going. And I, I guess my, quest, my question would be any, anything specific that was brought to, I, I, I guess one of the questions that was thrown at me here in the office was is people have been on the list for quite some time. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just uh, generally speaking, uh, it's been a year. If we put 10 in, if we put 100 in, are we on a, on a schedule where we're well, doing this on a regular basis? Uh, if I go back in history, and I can see a couple people, Doug, I see Doug's back there, Jennifer's here. Um, I brought my three marine binder here. We first had our first water meter committee um, back in 2009. Um, and then we set another one up in May of 2015. Since that time, of course, in between we had we had the, the hundred meter test pilot to figure out what residentials we're using. Um, I think in the 15 um, committee we talked about installing them all ourselves, and I and, and I at the time I think we were feeling a little bit more aggressive. While well, we could put in hope, hopes were to put in 300 a year, well, that's not going to happen. Um, so you go back to 2016, we put in 74. Mind you, we only have the three guys at the wastewater plant. So they run wastewater, 12 pump stations, the water system, and meters. Uh, 2017, they put 109 in. Uh, last year, they put 117 in. And to date, uh, they've put in 48 right now, currently. Um, I think, like I said, our hopes were to put in 300, and in the last couple winters, we usually take some of the guys from Public Works and, and set up a crew with, with those guys, but uh, unfortunately with the couple of winters we've had, we have had no chance right. to do that. Um, okay. Yeah. There are some people on there, and I know, and I, I know these are all the ones from this year I've logged in already. Um, Pedro, they've been struggling calling people. Uh, there's a lot of people that were on the list that uh, have sold the place or don't own it, so they can't request the meter if they don't own it, or they were in an apartment, or they've called multiple times. So we've set this up now so that they're putting it on the door, uh, trying to get a hold of people. Um, we can only try to call, and if they don't call us back, they can go. Um, but I think for the three guys that we currently have working on it, they're, they're making good strides, but we're not getting where I'd like to see us be, quite honestly. Um, uh, to bring up the issue, we, when John Ward was still here, and we, this has been hashed around for forever, um, we can't, we have no idea of knowing if, what we're losing in our system. Um, we'd lo love to do an audit of our system, but with only, uh, say, 500 meters out there right now, we still need at least about 1,000. Uh, we have no idea if we're, if we're losing any water, which I'm sure we are, and to try to tighten up our system. Uh, we, we get charged by the state of Vermont uh, for every gallon we produce out of that, our system, out of our wells. And uh, people aren't using it conservatively, conservatively. So um, I'd love to, since you brought the issue up, to bring it out on the table again, because I'm an advocate to, to meter. We're all metered for our power. Um, if you want to leave your lights on all day long and pay extra for your power or whatever, that's, that's your prerogative. But um, we're getting to a point where I feel uh, it would be 
to our best benefit to have everything here. And if you want to take it even one step further, we're currently involved in a, the, uh, the water tower project, which we're looking at an EDA grant. And some of their stipulations, just like USDA, we can't get grants on those if we're not metered. And we've missed the boat numerous times. Well, I can interject. Since I installed my water meter, what's the base rate? 170, 173? Water and sewer guys. Water and sewer, That's right. water and sewer. Right, but what I'm getting at is my bill, my bill averages around 113. I only use about four, three to four dollars every quarter above and beyond the base rate. So I've definitely saved. We know. What? Oh, come on now. <laughs> so you, so no, no, but what I'm getting at is I've talked with a couple people who actually asked me what I thought, and they had them installed, and they've saved on their water bill. They're very yeah. happy. And so, um, and what I like about the meter is even if you have the most minute drip, it still moves and records it because I do have a faucet that just started slightly dripping, and I went down with a flashlight, and for every drip, you can see that thing start to move. And so, but I've definitely saved. I'm, I, I'm an advocate that I think we ought to meter the whole city my reasoning is when you drive by and it's pouring rain and you see someone who's using their sprinkler out there and they haven't turned it off and it's pouring rain. That's just water that's... Well, I, I know I've saved significantly by metering. I actually paid a plumber to put the meters in for it. You know, and I think uh, it was uh, about a half, half hour for him to come down. And I probably had the ideal situation in my basement, you know, it came out cut, cut, and in goes the meter. Not everybody's going to have that ideal situation, but uh, I, I am thinking that it's almost time, if we're losing grant money, and there's a need for the water tower, and we want that money, it's almost time for us to step up and say, it's time to say we're going to have to be metered. Well, the EDA grant and alone is $1.2 million. So and we, and if we don't meter the city, we won't qualify for that. Right. And fights over the water meters go back to the 1920s. They were fighting about water meters back then. So it's nothing new. Well, know. I understand the, the, the fear that residents have. Uh, you know, a, a toilet's your worst enemy. If you don't take care of your toilet, you have a leaky toilet, you, you'll be surprised how much water will go by a toilet. Yeah. So next thing you know, you've got, you know, you've got a significant you know, bill that you, you're facing. But, Again, it's, it's about conservation, and it's about uh, tightening up the city. Um, and you'll know if it's uh, seepage out of the piping system. Rather than well, you know, once everybody's metered, we're, you know, we may get to a point where we may have to put some master meters in certain, you know, areas to try to, if we feel we're losing. We know what we produce every day at the, at the water pump. We know right down to the gallon how many gallons we pump every day. Uh, we don't know what we're really using. And what's being lost or leaked out, or, and, and then on the other side of it, whatever you're running in your house, we're treating it too. So it's a double-edged sword there. Uh, so if you're wasting water, we gotta treat that water too once it gets to the wastewater plant. So uh, yeah, I'd love to open up the discussion again. Uh, I think the council could could make that decision. Um, move us in in a, the right direction. I mean, the pace we're going. And there's nothing wrong with the pace we're going. It's a manpower thing. We could be five years out before, and that doesn't mean everybody will sign on. That's right. And there are going to be there are some that the guys have already wrote on their on their chart that are beyond us. I mean, you know, our guys do a great job, but as you said, some homes are very challenging. Um, you start having to reroute plumbing in the house, and I don't feel that's something that you know, we need to tackle. But, uh, and, and you've got other places that are houses that sit on a slab, you can have to put in a meter pit, or, or if they have a place in the house where you know it's not going to freeze. I mean, there's a lot of hurdles to, to overcome when we're the ones installing them. Like I said, you can get one and you're in and out of there in a half hour, and then you get the next one, you're there all day. Uh, so. so I guess that was part of my question, so I'm showing my absolute ignorance on water meters. Um, it's like. Exactly where do they go? <laughs> well, wherever your water comes into the house, that'll be the first thing. Okay. They'll have a valve on either side of it so we can isolate it to take it right back out, but there's no other connection before that meter. 
And the meters we have are very, very nice. I don't know if you've dealt with uh, Pedro or talked to him about mm -hmm. our meters, but they're, they're, uh, they're a radio read meter. So now we drive through the neighborhood and the vehicles. We, we used to take two weeks with two guys to, to read meters. Now we can drive around in three hours and get everybody in the city. And if you have a leak, you can go in and data log the, the meter and tell you exactly if you're leaking continuously, at certain times of the hour you're leaking. It, it's, it's, yeah. Technology is pretty amazing. And I think people, residents, would just need to realize that it's coming. And you know, if you have a leaky sink, you need to fix it. And in the end, it'll be cheaper to fix the sink, and it will be to pay the water bill. Are we still installing? Was I call it a check valve, so you can't back. We stopped in, installing those because of the the issue with those. If you have a hot water tank, uh, you had to also put on a uh, thermal expansion tank. Uh, That's why I have the tank then. Yeah, and we decided to to take those out. So now you put in a meter, a corner horn, and two valves for you know our cost just over three hundred dollars. Before it was almost $500, so uh, we reduced the cost, made it a little bit easier. But if we, you know, go this route, I, I, I think it should be, we maybe could possibly roll it into the grant and have somebody help us install it. So within a year or two we have it, not six, seven years out, we're still trying to struggle to, to install it. So. Any idea what uh, the total cost would be if we had to shoulder the whole cost of finish metering the whole city? I'd have to come up with that number. I, I, I'm pretty sure we, we had a ballpark number somewhere in my files here. Uh, if you were to hire it out, you're probably talking eight, nine hundred thousand dollars probably. Just top of my head. We, we knew originally we were looking at like a million dollar yeah. project, but we have installed, say, 200. What's the life cycle of the meter? Like the one, say, you, my house, I've been in since... 25 years, 20 to 25 years, depending on the meter. Okay. It's, and a lot of them, you can replace the guts in them, so you can, you can you know, replace the guts out of them. And, Put them back into service. So it'll outlast me. That's a good well. That's what I, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Twenty-five years. Yeah, it will. Yeah. No, 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 I was just curious because we're gonna have once you do meet at the city, you're gonna have to eventually get into that oh, replacement, replacement mode or a maintenance mode replacement. So we're, the ones you've installed that's been in for. I think mine's been in five years, maybe now four years since we first did the test cases. Yeah. Um, Eventually, that'll have to be coming up down the road. That's why I was asking that question. Yeah, the problem with the meter is they get, a, and we've been re aggressively replacing a lot of the aging ones. Is it doesn't help us because we're losing revenue. They 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 go to the homeowner or the business. Uh, they when they start uh, losing their life, um, we're losing money. So we've been aggressively replacing the businesses and trying to get all the old ones out of the system. So they slow down that. They slow down. Process. Plus, mm -hmm. plus putting in the radio reads is making it quicker for us not having to go in. And, and, you know, the days of actually reading the meter and writing it in the book are gone. And it was very time consuming. Okay. So. I was just thinking, um, when the board committee uh, met originally, I think the cost of putting in the meters at a, a pace of, of about 300 per year was included in our base rate. And so our base rate went up from $150 to 170 and the metered rate went up accordingly so that we could put in 300 meters per year. If we're not putting in the 300 meters per year, where's the extra money going like 200, 220 or $30. We haven't spent it. We've been, we've been, I've been, for the last three years, progressively uh, reducing the amount of money we've been putting into meters because it's just been inevitable that back when Jennifer was, we were on, had the committee in 2015, we thought, you know, we could do the 300. 
um, incorporate public works and, and really attack it, but it just hasn't, you know, when the guys get busy in the winter, winter time, like this past winter, there's, there's no free time. Um, so there's 230 um, meters worth per year of money that you have in a, a sunk fund of some kind? Well, last year we put in, what did I say, we put in last year, 100 and, 117 out of the 300 guests. So yeah, there was money that was unspent. We bought we meters, we bought the parts. Well, obviously, I'm not the money guy, but yeah, we didn't we didn't spend it. Yes, Jennifer? Uh, just two things that we've been on the committee. Uh, we were dealing with ballparks, uh, so it was our best guesstimate that that money would go for the goal for meters, and not all of it was out of the users. Some of it was coming from the city of Newport. And, um, you know, we, our, our facts were not, you know, solid total facts. Uh, the other thing is costs have gone up, and there has not been an increase in the water uh, rates. None of the rates have gone up since we established the new rate system. So technically, the money is still in the system there. It has prevented us from having to raise the rates, and you know, ended up with the meters which were going to be subsidized almost fully by the city. So I think, you know, the month there's not really spare money, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank any, you other, any questions, Lenny? No? Okay. We'll move on. Um, new business. I have one item that was brought in today. It is the annual five-year certificate of approval for the location of a salvage yard. It's basically the metal recycling place on the Crawford Road, rights, and they have to, we have to renew this every five years for the state of Vermont. And they paid their $25 fee. And so, what I would entertain a motion is to approve the certificate of approval for the location of the salvage yard. It's, meets the zoning, it's in our zoning area up there. You know, there's a big metal recycling facility if you go out the Crawford Road. If you go out from the, if you go out from the access road, it's on the left hand yeah. side. Yeah. And so, we would need a motion to approve this. I, I would just ask, there was uh, conditions on the permit when it was issued. Did anybody verify they were meeting your conditions? This just came in today. I mean, I don't know when it's due for the state. I know it's something that the council's been renewing every five years, and I'm assuming Charlie is on top of it. <laughs> Boy, I'm trying to think how long ago that was. This would be like the first time, I think, that we've renewed it. No, nope. I don't think they've been here five years. It's, no. it's got to be the first time. Is it? I know it's got to be, the, it be the first time. No, we renewed it once before because they called from the state. There was, yeah, I think this has been renewed. This is maybe. maybe it's not every five years. Maybe I'm misreading it. it. Says it can be from one to five years, but they made it sound like in the email I received it was every five years. This is a state requirement, and I know they have to meet all these state requirements. I mean, we, if we don't want to act on it, we don't have to. I just I, I, I think that just asking Carly if we're meeting the conditions around the permit would, you know, would satisfy that everything's okay. Okay, so we'll just hold off then. And I'm pretty sure there's things the dealing with the, how many cars and uh, the external storage and stuff up there. I know that. I know they're actually, they're more heavily regulated by the state of Vermont than by the city. Okay, then we'll hold off on that then. That's all I had on new business. Mr. Johnson, would you give that back to Becky tomorrow? So, oh no, I'll give it to Tom. Actually, I'll give it to Tom. That's spacing. And that way they can hold off on it. Okay. Touch piece with Charlie too. Do you want to check with Charlie? I can check with Charlie. Thanks. Okay. I know it's great to have him there. Get rid of a whole bunch of stuff at my house that I didn't know how I was going to get rid of it. <laughs> Brought it up there and they actually paid me. <laughs> All right. 
New business, Mr. Johnson. Well, the only thing I got is Memorial Day on the 27th this year. I'd like to have as many of you participate as possible. 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. If it rains, we'll be inside this building. <laughs> if we get started and it rains, then we need a motion to it uh, the next council meeting will be monday june 3rd 6 30 p.m and now we need a motion to adjourn at 7 05 p.m <laughs> Motion. <laughs> Motion made. Is there a second? Oh, you don't. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. Opposed. We're adjourned.